So which one of these is better for overlanding? Onyx Off-Road or Gaia GPS? You want the final verdict? Well, they both basically do the job and both have their strengths and drawbacks. And if you were to force me to choose one right now, it would be Gaia. But that might not be the right choice for you. I mean, who cares what some random dude on YouTube thinks? I'm just gonna give you the info so that you can determine which one is right for you. Before we dive into this, full disclosure, I've used Gaia GPS for quite a while now, and I've been using Onyx Off-Road for almost two years. I am not sponsored by either one of these. I do have an affiliate link for Onyx Off-Road through an affiliate network, and I applied to be a Gaia GPS affiliate months ago, and they've sadly ignored me. I'm gonna try to be as impartial as possible, but you kinda know how that goes. Personal bias always comes through to some degree. And keep in mind, I am very specifically looking at both of these through an overlanding slash car camping lens. If you're not familiar with either of these, they're both essentially services for GPS navigation and mapping with offline capabilities. For the purposes of overlanding, you can plan trips with both of them. That is in North America, you can. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later in the video. So I'm not gonna be talking about every single feature that these two have to offer because there are just a lot of similarities. Instead, I will be discussing how they differ in this video. All right, so here we go. Let's start off with subscription pricing. Yes, both of these are subscription services, but no, neither are creating agenda-driven divisive content. Let's start with Gaia. So Gaia GPS does offer a seven day free trial. And then on the screen, it looks like there's two different types of subscriptions, but really it's just one. Outside online bought Gaia GPS. I can't remember exactly when, but they're offering their outside plus service along with Gaia GPS premium right now for $1.99 a month for the first year. And then it's $4.99 per month after that, just like a regular Gaia premium subscription. So there's really no reason not to get the outside plus version. With Onyx Off-Road, there are two different types of subscriptions. They also offer a seven day free trial too. So there's a premium for $34.99 a year, which is the version that I have, and then an elite version that's $99.99 a year. And it offers everything the premium does obviously, and then adds in private land information, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. I've never tried the elite subscription level. Uh, apparently there's extra perks with like discounts through certain vendors, things like that. Okay, so let's take a look at some actual maps here. Right now I'm on Onyx and I've got Gaia loaded up here and they're both kind of zoomed in on an area of Stanislaus National Forest in California. And first thing I want to talk about is map layer. So with Onyx, you get a few options and they're mostly down here. Right now I'm in the standard 2D topographical mode. We have satellite imagery, of course, and then a hybrid mode too, which is just, you know, mixed between these two right here. And basically what you have here is obviously your normal maps with, you know, highways, roads, names of cities, some points of interest, things like that. And then on top of that, you by default, you get public land layers, which is all these shaded areas right here. So we've got the shaded green area, which is public land and the unshaded area, which is not public land. And then all these little dotted lines you see here all over the place are different types of dirt roads and trails, which are the MVUM layers. That's multi-vehicle use maps. So your normal kind of map plus a layer of public land plus the MVUM layer. And that's what you get with Onyx. In addition to what I just said, you have these filters right here. So I'm gonna select for overlanding purposes, high clearance four x four trails and full width roads. Now you see a bunch of those dirt roads and trails highlighted, which gives you a really good snapshot of where trails are located. I'm gonna turn those off for a second though. All right, now let's look at Gaia. So with Gaia, I have a very specific layer selected right now as my base layer which is Gaia Overland. Let's look at the information on that real quick. So this is kind of like an all encompassing map layer that gets you a lot of things you want to use for overlanding. And you see a legend right here with all the different points of interest. So you got more information on how to decipher between the different types of roads and trails, and then some land information down here where it's shaded different colors. But you'll notice it's not very distinguished on public land or not here per se. Not, at least not as well defined as on XCC here. So let me add another layer to that, which is public land. And now you're gonna see it's shaded pretty similarly to Onyx here. 
right? Now we have a pretty similar look. You still have the MVUM information with these dotted lines, different types of dirt roads and trails, and the public land layer, and obviously your normal map stuff as well. So we just saw in Onyx here that you're kind of limited in what you're able to select as far as map layers. All you really have here, like we saw earlier, is the Topo Hybrid Satellite, and then being able to select which types of trails are highlighted. And I'm going to turn these back on for a second. And I don't say limited as in necessarily it's a negative thing. Um, being streamlined is not a bad thing either because you do get a little bit overwhelmed with all the available layers that guy has sometimes and you really have to play with each one to kind of figure out what you need and what you absolutely don't need. Let's go back to Onyx for a second. And if I zoom in, you start seeing dotted blue lines and those represent either rivers, streams, creeks, or just water flow in general, like from snow melt, things like that. And obviously there's a ton of it in the mountains here, but almost too much information sometimes. And there's no way to turn just that off. I would literally have to go to satellite only mode just to get that off. The problem is if I go to satellite only mode, I don't get topographical lines anymore. Whereas in Gaia, if we're zooming in, no, I don't get all that information of where all the water flow is, but I still have where rivers and creeks and things like that are. And I have the topo lines, which I can turn on or off. And to do that, we're just going to use the layers. So let me go back to that. Right now I have satellite topo. Well, I can just go to satellite without topo. And now I still have satellite imagery, but without the topographical lines. I'm going to switch it back to how I like it right now. And I'm going to add a few more layers like wildfires current, wildfire satellite detection, and cell phone coverage with Verizon because I'm a Verizon user. And the other thing with guys layers is that you can adjust the opacity of each layer. So there I'm dialing down the Verizon one so it's not as overwhelming or I can turn it up if I need to see where cell phone coverage for Verizon is. And I can do the same thing with public land layers or any layers for that matter. So let me get rid of some of these for a second here. Now wildfires, I have two of them selected. One is satellite detection and I'll zoom out and try to find that for you just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. Let me turn off some other layers real quick just to make it easier to see everything. So that's a current fire. That's from the current fire layer, known fires, and if you click on them, you get some info on it. You can do the same thing with Onyx Off-Road. But satellite detection, however, are these little dots, and I don't see them right now. There we go. These little purple dots are any probable fires detected by satellite imagery. I'm guessing using some kind of information with heat. So there's an extra added bit of information, like you might be able to see a fire before it's actually reported and, and known and has data on it. Again, Onyx has current fire information as well. So let me zoom out, get rid of some of this data so it makes it easier to see. And we'll look for a current fire info. Like here's one down in LA here, or near LA. And if you click it, you got some information, current acreage, how much percentages contain things like that. Sometimes there's a link for a website for more information as well. And that's really similar to guys info. Let me see if I can find that same fire here. Well, they don't have that one anymore, but how about this guy right here? So it's called the STF query fire. Here's a link to the website so that you can get some more information on it too. And here's the current acreage. So a lot of different layers that you can use within Gaia. A little overwhelming at times, but once you play with it and get used to it, it's pretty useful. Another big difference between these two services is the quality of the satellite imagery. And for that, let's turn back on satellite topo for Gaia. And let's go back to Onyx for a second where I already have satellite imagery open. And I'm gonna zoom in on Lake Tahoe now. And let's just go into town here and kind of pan around and take a look. And as you can see, I can zoom in pretty far and it's still pretty clear. 
Whereas with Gaia, try to get to the same spot here. All right, there's that marina. Not bad, but as you zoom further in, it's a little bit blurrier. So let me try to get to the same exact area here, and I'm just gonna grab the GPS coordinates and make it easy on myself. There we go. So that's zoomed in with Onyx. Let's go to a reasonable amount, let's say like that, versus Gaia GPS. Quite a bit of a difference in satellite imagery quality. Next up, let's take a look at the 3D mapping feature in both of these. This is Onyx Off-Road, and I'm gonna switch this into 3D mode. I'm also gonna turn off the topo lines by just going to regular satellite, and I'm gonna turn off the highlighted trails. So let me pan around so we can take a look at, there we go. This is that famous section of Black Bear Pass where you got the switchbacks going on back and forth. And as you can see, as I zoom in, you get a real high level of detail. I mean, you can see four vehicles right there with Onyx Off-Road. You can really, really see what's going on. Now let's go to Gaia. We're in the same section. I'm gonna switch it to 3D mode. I'm gonna pan around here and then we're gonna zoom in. I know I have the topo lines here, but they're not nearly as distracting as in Onyx. So as we zoom in, a little bit blurrier, but it's still definitely usable. And you can see a couple vehicles right here, um, although they're kind of like blurred together a little bit. Still good, just not nearly as crisp and clear as Onyx Off-Road, as you can see. So Gaia GPS, Onyx Off-Road. Gaia GPS. On X off road. So when I'm planning out overlanding adventures, there's one key piece of info that one of these apps gives me and the other does not. So I'm in Guide GPS right now. The map is on a section of the Colorado BDR, which is this yellow line here. And that waypoint is a campsite I've used before. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to click around here, just a random coordinate and see what information it gives me. So we know the GPS coordinates and right here is what I'm talking about, elevation. So when I'm looking for areas where I can do dispersed camping, I like to know the elevation just so I can kind of have a rough idea of the temperature changes because of elevation. Um, right here, it gives you a forecast, but I mean, there's no weather station right here in the middle of nowhere on the Colorado BDR. So I can do my rough calculations on what the temperature difference is gonna be to the nearest town. And then Something that is useful also is I know that the coordinate I selected is within White River National Forest, so unless there are posted signs that say otherwise, I can do dispersed camping there. Now let's go to Onyx and click in roughly the same area here. So I'm going to click that White River National Forest. Awesome. That's good, useful information. GPS coordinates. But as you can see in this box here, no elevation information. You do get nearby trails, which is cool and a full-on weather report, whether that's accurate or not to that specific area, I'm not really sure. But I'll give you a lot of info, just not that one key piece of info, elevation. Let's revisit the topic of map layers real quick. So we're still looking at Black Bear Pass here, and for this, let's go to Onyx first, and I'm gonna turn back on the highlighting for high clearance 4x4 trails and full width roads. So there we go, Black Bear Pass in super neon highlighting. And we're gonna achieve a similar look in Gaia GPS with map layer. So let me open that up and select the MVUM map layer, multi-vehicle use maps. And as you can see, it's much more visible now because it's on top of everything else. And again, similar to Onyx Off-Roads look, just not crazy neon highlighted, but definitely more than visible enough. Now let's click on the actual trail and see what kind of information Gaia GPS gives us. So if I click on Black Bear Pass here, I'm gonna select that. And as you can see here, we have some information. Um, again, my favorite piece of info, the elevation there, current weather forecast available too for a few days. And then some info on what the trail is open to and when it's open from and until. So kind of useful, right? But let's take a look at Onyx now. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and click on Black Bear Pass, and oh, it's temporarily closed. Um, didn't tell us that in Gaia, right? 
And then you have some additional information right here, including how difficult the trail is and a technicality rating from six to 10. And it is a high clearance four x four trail accessible by these types of vehicles. A brief description, some photos, some need to know information. Uh, moderate difficulty, technical rating of six. Dirt surface, elevation changes, nearby trails. The trail reports are from other Onyx users that are reporting Black Bear temporarily closed right now. A bigger list of nearby trails and the full on weather details again. So a lot more trail information with Onyx Off-Road and that's to be expected. It is called Onyx Off-Road after all. Near the beginning of this comparison, we talked about the different levels of subscription pricing with both of these services. Onyx has two different subscriptions, either the premium at $35 a year or the elite at $100 a year. One of the benefits of the elite subscription is private land ownership information. I only have the premium version, so I don't have that extra data. But if we zoom into Telluride, it kind of gives you an example of what I'm talking about. You know that this is public land, national forest right here, right? And zooming into the little town of Telluride, we see that, yeah, there's some stuff owned by town of Telluride, town of Mountain Village, but all these houses, you have no idea who owns them. And that's probably not useful information for you, but some people do find value in it. So I thought I'd mention it. Now with Kaya GPS, you get a special layer that has that information. And remember, Kaya GPS only has one level of subscription at $60 a year. So I'm gonna add that private land layer just so you can see what it looks like. Now you got a ton of highlights, right? And those are borders of parcels of land. So now if I zoom into Telluride, not only can I see stuff that the town owns, I can also see private owner's information. Like Anthony Truesdale owns this house right here. Again, I don't know how useful that is to most of you, but it's available in Gaia without additional costs. Now let's talk a little bit about points of interest and how these two apps handle that. So let's say you were wheeling out in Colorado, you just did imaging pass through Telluride, and now you're super tired, you're just looking for a place to set up camp, and you don't want to spend too much time looking for one. Well, we came through Telluride and we came down 145 here and oh, there's a campground right here. So let me click that and check out what kind of information we've got. We know it's Sunshine Campground, established campground. And there's a link to, I believe it's just recreation.gov. Yeah, you still have to look up that campsite yourself. And then some info on it. It's a single loop paved campground with 15 campsites. That's pretty useful. And let's see, we got the GPS coordinates. Oh, there we got the elevation now. And let's see, some information on the Forest Service Ranger District. Again, nearby trails if there are any, and some weather forecasting. Now let's see what Gaia GPS does. And I see that campground, but before I click it, I'm gonna turn on the layer USFS Recreation Sites. So that's US Forest Service Recreation Sites. And now you see them highlighted a little bit more. Now I'll click on Sunshine Campground and select it. And again, a little bit of weather info, elevation, just like Onyx showed me. I was surprised it even had that. And then a tiny bit of information right here. Uh, let's see, it's got an information link to the Forest Service website. Let's see what's going on with that and if it loads. Okay, it's closed right now. And you know, all the info you'd get off the Forest Service website, right? So let me close that and get rid of it. Back within Gaia, we see that there are no reservations. First come, first serve campaign. It's open on May 12th and it's $24 per night and $6 for day use. So a little bit more info, even though it doesn't look like a lot of info here, than you get with Onyx. Okay, so that's great for like camping information, for service, kind of like points of interest information. But what about other points of interest? Uh, I know when I'm out overlanding, I want to be able to explore and see all the things, right? So let me think of one that I know that I've been to recently, which is the Crowley Lake Stone Columns. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's this weird geological formation at a reservoir in California. So let me type that in the search bar here. Crowley Lake Stone Columns. There we go in Mono County, California. So I'm going to select that. It's going to take me right to it. And there we go. The Crowley Lake Stone Columns right here. So if I click that, I mean, there's not too much information on it, right? 
but it's marked exactly where it is in Gaia and I didn't have to go to a different resource to find it, right? Now in Onyx, even though Onyx does have quite a lot of information, it doesn't have as much information on these types of points of interest. So I'm going to type in Crawley Lake stone columns. So no results found, right? So let's just go back to Crowley Lake then. And I'm just going to select Crowley Lake, Mono County, California. That brings me to the town of Crowley Lake. And the lake's actually up here. And if I remember right, the columns are right in this area, right around here. And as you can see, like there's no points of interest anywhere around here. So Onyx won't have that kind of information for you, but Gaia has a ton of that stuff. I'll give you another example. I'm not always just driving around or camping, and that's the only two things I do. Sometimes, you know, we do a little bit of hiking and things like that too. So if we're in Onyx Off-Road and we're looking at the Mount Whitney area, there are trails all through here, and you can see them right here, right? Hiking trails, that is. And uh, if I zoom in, and keep zooming in. You still see the trail, but oh, you zoom in too far and that trail is gone. And you know what? It's not that easy to see on here either and to follow, especially when you're zoomed in. Let's go to topo mode and see if it's better. Yeah, in topo mode, it's a little bit better, but also one of them just kind of disappeared completely, huh? Let's go back to hybrid here and zoom out. There's this trail right here, right, that I'm, you're following with my mouse cursor in topo mode. Oh, it's there. It's just extremely faint, kind of hard to see. All right, so let's check that out in Gaia. Here we see the dotted lines of the trails, and if I zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, those lines are permanently there because Gaia was originally designed as more of an app for, you know, all outdoor activities, not just overlanding, off-roading, that kind of thing. So it does have a lot more information on other kinds of outdoor activities for you. During the intro, I mentioned that Onyx Off-Road is really only good in North America, and that's absolutely true. They only have data for Canada, the US, and Mexico. So let's say you wanted to go on a grand adventure running the Pan American, and you want to go all the way down to Ushuaia in Argentina. Let me search for that in Onyx Off-Road here. So they only have something with Ushuaia in it in Idaho somewhere. So that's not helpful. Let's do it in Gaia real quick. There we go. All right, so there's the town of Ushuaia all the way down near the very, very southern end of Argentina. And I'm gonna just get a coordinate here to plug into Onyx. All right, so I've got the same area of the map on both, and you can see there's still a good amount of information, even in South America here in Argentina, with Gaia GPS. So you still have all the streets, all the roads, everything. And in Onyx, because they have no data for anywhere else other than North America, there is literally no information. All you have is a satellite imagery. So if you are doing international travel, Onyx doesn't support that at the moment. Sometimes you want to share your data with other people, and these two apps handle it in very different ways. You can export either GPX or KML files in either Onyx or Gaia, but as far as sharing, it's a little bit different. So with Onyx, if I want to share data, I've got a waypoint selected here. I'm going to hit the share button and copy the share link. I'm going to open a private browser so that I'm not logged in. So if we go to that URL I copied, you can see here that it wants me to log in in order to see that information. So the only way to share data is to another Onyx off-road account. Now, if we use Gaia, and I've got a folder selected here called Lost Coast, and that mapped out my entire Lost Coast trip that I did a couple videos for back in August. I'm gonna hit the share button on this one. That copied it to the clipboard. Again, I am going to open a private browsing window and paste it. So what I did was I took that URL and put it in the comment section of those two videos on this trip and anybody can access it. You can see up here that I am not logged in, yet you have 
all the data in front of you, the routes, waypoints that I marked out and everything. From here, you can export it to a GPX KML file yourself and use the data however you want. So this part may not apply to everybody. I'm going to talk about the two apps working with Apple CarPlay right now. I don't have an Android device, so I can't speak to Android Auto. But for all the CarPlay users out there, there's a little bit of a difference in the functionality, basically, of the CarPlay connection with uh, Onyx Off-Road and with Gaia GPS. Let's look at Gaia GPS first down on my head unit here. So I have the map centered in on the Alabama Hills, Lone Pine area in California right now. And if I go to play around with the map and I want to zoom out, this is as far as I can zoom out for the CarPlay mode in Kaya GPS. You can zoom in pretty far to get whatever details you need, which is great and typically how you're going to be using it anyways. But you can't zoom out very far if you want to pan around the map to find a different location. However, with Onyx Off-Road, got it zoomed in on basically the same area. And if I want to zoom out to be able to pan around, I can. I can zoom out way further than you actually need. And obviously you can still zoom into great detail when you do want to get a nice close-up view of the area you're looking at. So a little bit of a difference between these two when it comes to connecting to CarPlay. I'm sure it's really similar in Android Auto. And I find that the Onyx CarPlay is a little bit more usable in that regard. Now let's take a quick look at the mobile versions of both of these. Right now we're in Gaia GPS on iOS. And one big difference between these two is 3D mapping in the mobile version. So for a Gaia GPS, since I'm in iOS, I have no access to 3D mapping. I do in Onyx, which I'll show you real quick. So there you go, that's 3D mapping in Onyx, but not in the iOS version of Gaia GPS. From what I've read, you do have 3D mapping in Android, but not in iOS yet. So there's one distinction. And then the other one is how these two save offline data. And that's the biggest use for these two, especially with overlanding. So let me show you how that works in these two. So I'm going to go to offline maps in Onyx Off-Road here. And right now I've got the map centered on an area uh, which is Gold Lake in Northern California. And I'm going to create a new map. And when you do that, you see that the box is automatically drawn for you. And this is the maximum size you can have in the box in high detail, medium detail, bigger, and then low detail, which is pretty darn big. And keep in mind that Onyx is going to save all the data that's available for it. So the satellite imagery and all that. And that's what you're changing here with low, medium, high is the quality of the satellite imagery. Let's go back to high real quick. And you can see Gold Lake is in the center there. It's pretty teeny tiny. You got a pretty usable area around it, but that file size is 1.4 gigabytes. If we go down to medium in the maximum size you save, still at 1.2 gigabytes. And then in low detail at a max box size, we're still talking one gigabyte of data. You can make the boxes much smaller, obviously. Than what we're doing here so if i go back to high detail real quick and i really just want like what's immediately around the lake let's say something like that and then you're talking like less than a quarter of a gigabyte okay and that's still almost three miles by nearly five miles now if we're going to do that in gaia one big point of difference is remember the advantage of gaia being map layers and being able to choose what layers you want and don't want so when you save offline data with gaia gps you're choosing how much data you want to save. Right now I've got four different layers on here, right? I can remove any of them. I can add whatever I want. Keep in mind that if you're saving offline data, certain layers that require constant updates, like um, for example, let me find one here. Uh, wildfires current, that requires current data to update. And obviously you can't save offline data for that, but let's go with what we have with satellite imagery and everything. And I'm going to save offline maps. In Gaia, you're able to draw like whatever size box you want. So let's say I want something. Let's just go to the max. Okay. And remember Gold Lake's kind of up in the uh, top left-hand corner there. So that's too big. Now you see the uh, information at the top there in file size turn red. I'm going to make that smaller and we're back down to, let's stop here. 382 
megabytes is about the max it's going to go oh no here we go 414 megabytes and then that's too big now so let's back it down to like there we go 425 that's probably near the limit much larger area than what onyx was letting me save at least in high detail level and remember there is a difference between quality of satellite imagery but not enough that it's a deal breaker for most people so you can save a little bit more data using Gaia GPS in one file. You can obviously do multiple files and have, you know, them stacking on top of each other, basically for offline data. That's not a problem. You can do that with either one of these, but just a little bit of a difference with what you can do with Gaia in terms of flexibility with what data you want to save. Um, for me personally, I really only save the Gaia overland layer because all I need to do offline when I'm out and about adventuring is to be able to find my way. And I already have my waypoints and routes all planned out. I don't necessarily need all the other stuff, especially like satellite imagery. Like I'm really not gonna be looking at that when I'm out in the middle of nowhere offline, I'm gonna be enjoying that with my own eyes, right? So that's up to you guys if that's a feature that you need or not. But personally, I enjoy the little bit more flexibility you get with saving offline data with the Gaia GPS app. So there you have it. Hopefully this gives you some good insight into which one would be best for your needs. If you're looking for something that has very little learning curve and is really straightforward, then Onyx is probably for you. If you're mostly wheeling and doing a little bit of camping, then Onyx is still probably the best choice for you. Remember, it's called Onyx Off-Road. It's very off-roading centric. Just remember that they only have data for North America currently in case you plan to travel outside of that. Now, if you want all the thingamajigs and doohickeys, like more layers than Little Randy in A Christmas Story. Oh, preparing to go to school was like getting ready for extended deep sea diving. More ways to share your data and more versatility when it comes to finding different kinds of points of interest or for other outdoor activities like hiking, then Gaia GPS is probably better suited for you. No matter which one you decide to use, the real important thing is to just have some kind of offline GPS navigation when you adventure off the grid. Which one do you use and why? Let me know down in the comments below. Like I said at the beginning, if you forced me to choose one from an overlanding perspective, then I choose Gaia GPS. But if you feel like Onyx Off-Road is better suited to your needs, I put an affiliate link down below in the description. If you want Gaia GPS and you want to help me out, well, email them and let them know that they should make me their affiliate. So there's my two and a half cents. Why the extra half cent? Well, it's because I'm in California. Everything here costs more. And on that note, it's time to end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Always remember that destinations don't matter. The journey matters. This is Roger wishing you happy offline GPS navigating.